Hello there, Tinker Nerds. Must be time for another comment show. This is the original video of Consequence where I made this nifty little ping pong ball launcher, or whatever your imagination could extract from that. A sentry nerf gun. Not a bad idea. How about using eggs? <laughs> I can hatch one of those. It's good for annoying Pokemon Go players. No, actually, it's loaded with Pokeballs. Okay, yeah, now that's annoying. Have you considered using a Raspberry Pi instead of an Arduino? Also, what are the advantage of using an Arduino over a Raspberry Pi? I did consider a Raspberry Pi over an Arduino, but for this project, it would have been just a little bit of overkill. An Arduino is a microcontroller, which means it can do one program at a time over and over again, and it does that very well. The Raspberry Pi, on the other hand, is a full-fledged computer. So if you wanted to do something simple like detecting motion and triggering motors because of that, then an Arduino is perfect. But if you want to add extra things like lights, sounds, or web controls, then a Raspberry Pi would be a better choice. How can we increase the range and power? So as I was making this project, I had a lot of different results as far as distance, with the greatest distance being about six feet. Now, a lot of you guys in the comments had a lot of really good suggestions as far as increasing the distance even more, such as raising the center of the ping pong ball so that it goes through the motors better, or creating a little release mechanism so that it releases the ping pong ball at the peak speed of the wheels, or even using more paper towel rolls to help guide the ping pong ball through the wheels and even after it gets through the wheels so that it keeps it going straight. But it's just a matter of messing around with different things and figuring out what works best. And that's kind of up to you. Why do you need two separate power supplies? Can't you use the 9-volt battery to drive the Arduino and the motors? The 9-volt battery doesn't have enough power to split between the Arduino and the two motors. And this is primarily due to a lack of current. And because of the amount of current that the motors are drawing under load, you could potentially damage the Arduino if you wired it directly to that. And that's why I decided to use the little motor controller that I did because it works really well at making sure the motors have enough current safely. What does RC stand for in RC car? I think it stands for rotating clown. Rhododendron cloning. Really cool. Rad cylinder. Really cheap. You are all winners. Sorry, but this project was crap. All right. I should address my motives for this video because not only did it get a lot of comments like this, it also had a lot more dislikes than any video that I've done in a long time. There are two reasons why I did this specific type of video. The first reason is because I had a lot of commenters that were a little bit annoyed saying that my videos were becoming too difficult and that the parts weren't readily accessible. So this was my attempt at creating something that basically anyone could do using primarily parts that you could scavenge from around your house, at least for the first part of that project. All right, now reason number two is because I had a really rushed week and this was a project that I knew that I could get done in the amount of time that I had. Which brings up another point. What I learned from last week's video is that most of you seem to not like cheap looking unfinished projects. That being the case, my project for next week is going to take a little bit longer to finish because of that. So my question to you all is, do you want me to post that video as a series of videos as I did with the smartwatch, or do you want me to wait until the complete project is finished and post it in a single video? So let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. All right, thank you all again for all of your comments, and I'll see you all next time.